Today we'll start the problems on capital budgeting. In the last session we have discussed there are various techniques available for evaluating capital budgeting proposals. Now we are going to apply those techniques to solve the problems on capital budgeting. So already these problems we have provided to you. Already you got it. Now we are directly going to solve the problem. The first problem you can see here. Calculate the payback period of the following projects, each requiring a cash outlay of rupees 1 lakh. Suggest which project is acceptable if the standard payback period is given as 5 years. So we are given 5 years data 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The cash inflows are given project A, 30,000 for all the years, constant. Second B project, 30,000, 40, 20, 10, 5. In the previous session we have discussed, Payback period is the time required to get back our initial investment. There are two methods of calculating the payback period. First is formula. Payback period is equal to initial investment by constant annual cash inflow. This formula will be applied only when annual cash inflows are constant. Whereas if the annual cash inflows are not constant, we have to calculate cumulative cash inflow. By calculating cumulative cash inflow, we find the payback period. Now come back to the problem. In our problem, A project we have constant cash inflows. A project we have constant cash inflows. So we apply the formula to calculate PDP. So first we write calculation of PBP, payback period. Project A, constant cash inflows. So PBP is equal to initial investment divided by constant cash inflow. This is the formula to calculate the PBP. So PBP is equal to initial investment is given in the problem 1 lakh and constant cash inflow is given in the problem 30,000. So PBP will become 3.33 years that's it this is the pvp of project a pvp of project a is 3.33 years simply we have applied the formula now we'll come to project b in project b the annual cash inflows are not constant so we apply cumulative cash inflow method to find out the pvp so in this method we take year, then we take cash inflows, then third column we take cumulative cash inflows, cumulative cash inflows. So year 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 years are given. The cash inflows are given in the problem as 30,000. 40,000, then 20,000, 10,000, and 5,000. These are the cash inflows. Now we, we cumulate 30,000 first year, same cash inflow. 30 plus 40, you will get 70,000. 70 plus 20, you will get 90. 90 plus 10, you will get 1 lakh. 1 lakh plus 5,000, 1 lakh 5,000. We have calculated cumulative cash inflows. Now, the initial investment or cash outflow, initial investment or cash outflow given in the problem as rupees 1 lakh. Now we have to search 1 lakh rupees in which year the cumulative cash inflow is 1 lakh rupees. The cumulative cash inflow is 1 lakh rupees against 4th year. So we got PBP is equal to 4 years. PBP is equal to 4 years. In 4 years, we can be able to get back our initial investment of 1 lakh rupees. So in this way, we have calculated PBP by formula method and PBP by cumulative method. Now it is given that the standard payback period given by the management is 5 years. Applying that 5 years standard PBP, we can make the conclusion both the projects are acceptable 
both the projects a project and b project both the projects are acceptable because the actual pbp of both the projects are less than the standard pbp of 5 years standard pbp of 5 years that is the conclusion i am not writing here just i am explaining in examination you have to write the conclusion that by applying this uh, pvp formula both the pvp are less than the standard pvp given by the management so it is suggested to accept both are acceptable Now, see the second problem. Problem number two. Second problem, see carefully. A project cost Rs. 25,000 and has a scrap value of 5,000 rupees after five years. So, we are given the cost of the machine project is 25,000. 5,000 scrap value and five years is the life. The net profit before depreciation and taxes for 5 years period are expected to be 5000, 6000, 7000, 8000 and 10000. You are required to calculate ARR average rate of return assuming 50% rate of tax and depreciation on straight line method. First problem we have done on PVP. The second problem is on ARR average rate of return. So we know the average rate of return is equal to average PAT profit after tax divided by average investment into 100. The formula for ARR is average PAT divided by average investment into 100. But profit after tax is not given in the problem. So we have to first of all find what is the how much is the profit after tax. We have to find out the average PAT. Then only we can be able to find out the AR. So here the profits are given before depreciation and taxes. We don't require before depreciation. We want after depreciation and after taxes. So first we calculate annual depreciation. Annual depreciation as per straight line method is equal to cost minus scrap divided by life. This is the formula for calculating annual depreciation. The cost, the cost of the project is 25,000 minus scrap value. The scrap value is given in the problem 5,000 divided by life 5 years. So it comes to 20,000 divided by 5 that is equal to 4,000. 20,000 divided by 5, you will get annual depreciation 4,000. Now we need annual PAT. So calculation of PAT, profit after tax. So first we are going to take year, then CFBT. CFBT stands for cash flow before tax. Then we take depreciation. After depreciation, we will get PBT. On this PBT, tax will be applied at the rate of, it is given in the problem, 50%. Then lastly, we will get PAT. So these are the columns we require to calculate PAT. CFBT is given in the problem. Before depreciation, before tax profit is given. But we need PAT. So first from CFBT, deduct depreciation. We'll get PBT, profit before tax. Then calculate the tax 50%. Subtract the tax, we'll get PAT. So how many years data is given? 5 years. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Five years data is given. Total PAT. Now, the CFBT given is 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000 and 10,000. These are the profits before tax given in the profit, before depreciation and tax. Depreciation just now we have calculated 4,000 for every year. 
because it is a straight line method so annual depreciation will remain same so CFPT minus depreciation will get PBT so 5000 minus 4000 1000 2000 3000 4000 and 6000 these are the PBT now on this PBT tax is applied at the rate of 50 percent so 50 percent of 1000 it comes to 500 1000 1500 2000 3000 now subtract PBT minus tax what we get is PAT so same amount you will get 500 1000 1500 2000 and 3000 the total 3 5 6 7 8 the total PAT is 8000 but we need average PAT. Average PAT is equal to total PAT divided by number of years. That is equal to 8000 divided by 5. You divide 8000 divided by 5. So here 8000 divided by 5 you are getting 1600. So what we have calculated now? average PAT now we have to calculate average investment so complete formula I am giving you here average investment is equal to half 1 by 2 half of cost plus installation minus scrap plus scrap this is the formula to calculate average investment that is equal to 1 by 2 into what is the cost of the project 25,000 plus we don't have any installation we have the scrap value 5,000 out of the bracket again scrap value will be added so it becomes 25,000 minus 5,000 20,000 so half of 20,000 will become 10,000 plus outside the bracket 5,000 so total comes to 15,000. This 15,000 is the average investment. Now ARR, average rate of return is equal to average PAT divided by average investment into 100. So average PAT we got 1600, average investment we got 15,000 into 100. So 1600 divided by 15,000 in 200 you are getting 10.67 percent. that's all again we can see we can check 1600 divided by 15,000 in 200 you are getting 10.67 percent this is the ARR so again I repeat the formula for ARR is average PAT by average investment PAT is not given in the problem, PBT is given, CFBT is given. So how to convert CFBT into PAT? Remember this. So before calculating this, we have calculated annual depreciation. Annual depreciation, cost minus scrap by life. Take this depreciation, CFBT minus depreciation, PBT. On PBT, we apply the tax. Deduct the tax, we get the PAT. Take the total of PAT. Average PAT is equal to total PAT divided by number of years. Average investment is equal to half of depreciable value of asset. Depreciable value of asset means cost minus scrap. So cost minus scrap ka half le lenge. Or jo bhi scrap ha usko out of the, out of the column, outer column mein add kar. So it will become 15,000. Now, see the problem number three. See problem number three. The finance manager of a company has the following data. Operational life of the project is four years. Operational life of the project is four years. The earnings before depreciation, interest and taxes are expected to be. Earnings, earnings means profit. The profit before depreciation, interest and taxes are 44,000, 62,000, 78,000, 86,000. Depreciation is on straight line basis and tax rate 25%.
Investment required in the project is 1,92,000. Find the ARR of the project. Exactly similar problem. Exactly similar. So first we write or we calculate the annual depreciation. Annual depreciation as per straight line method is equal to cost minus scrap by life. Is equal to the cost of the project is 1,92,000. There is no scrap divided by life is 4 years. So 1,92,000 divided by 4. 1,92,000 divided by 4. You will get 48,000. Annual depreciation 48,000. Now calculation of PAT. Calculation of PAT. Year CFBT depreciation then PBT then tax at the rate of 25% 25% depreciation state and tax rate is 25% then we get PAT year 1, 2, 3, 4 only 4 years is the life total PAT the CMPT given in the problem are 44,000, 62,000, 78,000, and lastly 86,000. Annual depreciation are 48,000 constant. 48,000 constant. Now Profit before tax. Profit before tax. So CMPT 44,000 minus depreciation 48,000. You will get minus 4,000. Minus 4,000. 62 minus 48. You will get 14,000. 78 minus 48. You will get 30,000. Then 86. 86 minus 48, you will get 38,000. Now 25% is the tax. Now we assume when there is no income, no profit, so there will be no tax. There will be no tax. No profit, no tax. So tax will be zero. Now 48 minus 14, not 48, first of all, this is zero. 25% of 14,000. So 14,000 into 25% will get 3,500. Similarly 30,000. 30,000 into 25% you will get 7,500. Similarly 38. 38,000 into 25% that is 9,500. We got the tax. Now we subtract. PBT minus tax. So PBT is minus 4,000. Minus 4,000 minus 0 will be minus 4000 only minus 4000 similarly 14000 minus 3500 10500 30000 minus 7500 that is equal to 2200 lastly 38000 minus 9500 you will get 28500 now we need the total plus 2200 plus 10,500 minus 4,000 you will get 57,500 so PAT total PAT now we need the average PAT average PAT is equal to 57,500 divided by 4 14,375 average PAT is 14,375 now average investment is equal to 1 by 2 into cost minus scrap plus scrap but here we don't have any scrap the cost is 1,92,000 minus 0 plus 0 that is equal to 1,92,000 divided by 2 you will get 96,000 we got average PAT 96,000. Now, ARR is equal to average PAT 
divided by average investment into 100. So average PAT we got 14,375. Average investment we got 96,000 into 100. So 14,375 divided by 96,000 into 100 you will get 14.97%. That's it. 14.97%. This is the ARR. So two problems we have done on ARR. Average rate of return or accounting rate of return. Now, see the problem number three. Problem number three over. Now, problem number four. Fourth problem. A limited company is considering investment in a project requiring a capital outlay of rupees 2 lakhs. Forecast of annual net cash flow CFAT are given as follows. Year 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 years data is given. CFAT, cash flow after tax. Simply what we call it as cash inflows. That is nothing but CFAT, cash flow after tax. Calculate net present value taking cost of capital as 10%. Last 2-3 problems we have done on PBP and ARR. Now this is the first problem on net present value. Discounted cash flow technique. Very important technique. Now we are going to start. So net present value is a discounted cash flow technique. Where we bring down the future cash inflows to its present value by taking a discounting factor. The discounting factor is the required rate of return or the cost of capital that will be given in the problem. It is given the cost of capital is 10%. At 10% rate, we have to bring down the future cash inflows to its present value. Ultimately, the formula for calculating NPV, net present value is present value of cash inflow minus present value of cash outflow. Simply, PV of cash inflow minus PV of cash outflow, that is NPV. So this is the first problem on calculation of NPV. So two things we require, present value of cash inflow and present value of cash outflow. So present value of cash outflow is given in the problem, no calculations, nothing. We have to make the calculations for present value of cash inflows. So first I am writing calculation of net present value. This is nothing but NPV. First problem on NPV. Right? So to calculate NPV, we require present value of cash inflow. Year cash inflows. These cash inflows are nothing but CFAT. Then present value factors at the rate of 10%. Then present value of cash inflow so here it is given five years data five years inflows are given three four five we are calculating present value of cash inflow here in this problem the annual cash inflows are given as fifty thousand constant Every year cash inflows are remaining same, 50,000, right? Now present value factors, for calculating present value factors, we have mathematically one formula that is 1 divided by 1 plus r to the power of n, 1 divided by 1 plus r to the power of, m, to the power of n. This formula will give you what is the present value of 1 rupee after n years at R percentage of interest. So present value of 1 rupee is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus R to the power of n. R means rate of interest. N means number of years. For example, year 1. Year 1 is equal to 1 plus 0 0.10 to the power of 1. That is nothing but 1 divided by 1.10 to the power of 1 means same is equal to 0 0.909 you'll get 0 0.909 similarly for year 2 
1 divided by 1.01 plus 0 0.10 to the power of 2. 1 divided by 1.10 to the power of 2. 0.826 you will get. Similarly for third year, 1 divided by 1.10 to the power of 3. Fourth year, 1 divided by 1.10 to the power of 4. So why? Just to explain you how we will get the present value factor of 1 rupee. Present value factor of 1 rupee after 1 year, after 2 years, after 3 years, like that. So instead of making all these calculations, we can get the present value factor in the table. In any textbook, you can find at the end of the page present value tables. We can use these tables or with the help of calculator, simple normal calculator, you can find out the present value factors. How to calculate the present value factors? I am showing it on the calculator itself. At 10%, so our rate of interest is 0 0.10. 10% ka matlab 0 0.10. So I am writing 1 divided by 1.10. 1 divided by 1.10 is equal to, you can see 0 0.909. Is equal to 0 0.909. So here I am taking 0 0.909. For second year, simply you have to press is equal to. Nothing else, only simply press is equal to. You will get 0 0.826. 0.826 Again third year simply press is equal to 0 0.751 Again simply press is equal to 0 0.683 Last one 0.621 So ek bar aapko 1 divided by 1.10 Ek hi bar karna hai 1 divided by 1.10 Uske baad is equal to, is equal to, is equal to Martha Jaya, second year, third year, fourth year, you will get. So, present value factor. Or else, if you have calculator, you can use the calculator, you can use the tables. So, you tables in the tables, 10% rate of interest for first year, second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year, you will get 0 0.909, 0 0.826, 0 0.751. Right? Now, we have to multiply. Multiply the cash inflow with PV factors. So 50,000 into 0 0.909. 50,000 into 0 0.909. We are getting 45,450. Similarly, 50,000 into 0 0.826 is equal to 41,300.